Hey, good morning, Molly Murder Mittens. How's it going, sweetie? How are you doing, girl? Mm -hmm. Oh boy, we got a cold one today. I just checked the temperature, it's 25 degrees Fahrenheit. It's been incredibly warm the past few days, and so, I don't know, I feel like we're kind of reverting back to normal here. But I will say there is something quite nice about this cold, crisp air. It definitely wakes you up in the morning. Wake me up before you go, go. Good morning, Mr. Toby Dog. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> Hi, pal. How's it going? You wanna pick through the chicken treats? <laughs> he stole some kale stems. I'm telling you, I, I knew you didn't want it, look. Yeah, you want some, some old Swiss chard next? What are you gonna go for, kid? Oh, butternut squash peel. That dog's got impeccable taste. And speaking of dogs with impeccable taste, how's my Abby Dabby do? How's it going, sweetheart? Good to see ya. Yeah, oh, did you have a nice night? Yeah? So the other day I put out a short video about Toby and Abby and how they went to the groomers. Yeah, you guys got very pretty, even though since then you've probably gotten a little bit muddy. It's tough to keep farm dogs clean. My goodness, Abby, you were looking filthy. Toby, you're not looking so good either. We're gonna have to get you guys cleaned up. You're good. So fluffy, buddy. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're like a whole different dog. Oh. Out you go. You look beautiful. And Toby, you are so handsome, buddy. All right, you guys are ready for winter. And when I put that video out, one of the questions actually I got from several folks was about Abby and her coat. Because if you're looking closely at things right now, you can see it's quite different than Toby's coat. Yeah, Abby, we need to talk about your coat here. Because yeah, if you look at Abby's fur, while it's very soft and luxurious and thick, it is absolutely nothing when you compare it to Toby Dog's coat. Because if you look at Toby's coat, it's like he's a gosh darn polar bear. When you look at Abby's coat, it's much, much shorter and much, much thinner than Toby Dog's coat. I mean, look at that. That is a dog built for polar conditions. I don't know, is that built for polar conditions? We should really talk about that one. I got treats for my chickens. Where are my chickens at? Is anybody interested? Let's see what we got here. We got some scrap greens, we got some carrot peels, we got some butternut squash peels, we got a couple apple cores, we got some stale popcorn. Seems like good stuff for the chickens. Oh, they love it. You guys are missing out. I absolutely love watching these guys work. It's so incredibly satisfying. And speaking of watching them work, I think based on my head count, there's a couple of them laying inside there right now. All right, let's hook you up with some water. Hopefully all this water didn't freeze. Ugh. Most of the water froze overnight and so it's like rock solid in the bucket. So I'm gonna have to hook them up with a little bit more water later. Why aren't you with everybody else there, girl? Huh? So Pablo Barncat had a conversation with me last night told me that he's not very happy with his performance so far in the race for Barn Cat of the Year. And so he's decided to come out here this morning and put in some effort and try to catch some mice. Of course, I'm not sure if he's gonna be able to do that with Abby around. He's just a cranky old man waiting on the rocks with a teenage puppy on his back. All right, Abby Dog, let's go do the cows now. Cow chores are always Abby's favorite chores of the day. And admittedly, they're also my favorite chores of the day. I'm gonna show you guys what's going on before I get up there and disrupt this scene, because it's kind of cool. You got Anna Green Gables. She was just licking her daughter, Belinda Carlisle. You got Bonnie McMurray getting a drink from her mom. Got the other ones just sort of loafing around. We're gonna keep walking up there as quietly as we can to see what we can sneak up on here. Look at that. I know I should be weaning them pretty soon, but it's pretty majestic to see a sight like that. Just a baby getting a good drink of milk. You know, watching these calves grow up has been very, very gratifying. I can think back to late March and early April when they were all born, mid-April, and uh, it's just kind of incredible to see just how far they've come. Let's disconnect the fence. Hey, Annie, how's it going? Like, even this is kind of cool, right? So this is where Anna Green Gables was sleeping. That's where her daughter, Belinda Carlisle, was sleeping. And you can see where the frost melted away. Hey, Belinda, sweetie. Yeah. You guys see the frost on her? See that frost? She's getting chilly. I'm like Ariel lets us get up nice and close. Oh no! Ugh. <laughs> Belinda almost knocked over the camera. Oh, I just broke up the party right there. Abby, don't get into trouble, huh? 
Good girl. That's what you do. You sit. That keeps you out of trouble. Hey, Jimi Hendrix. You're nice and frosty too, buddy. Yeah, you like it when I scratch your head. I know it. Well, Belinda, you're getting curious again? So I think Belinda's gonna be the next bovine that gets comfortable with me. I, mean, I already got Jimi Hendrix pretty comfortable with me. And I think it's Belinda I wanna work on. And Belinda's gonna be hopefully a cow that I have on my farm for a very long time. She's just a heifer calf right now, but probably come not 2023, but in 2024, I'll end up starting to breed her. Same thing with Bonnie McMurray back there. Jimi Hendrix, unfortunately, you will not have that fate. But doesn't mean I can't love on you and you can't have a good life, pal. What are you two gross ones doing back there? Ew. Just a fresh turd from Audrey? You're just gonna start chowing down? Well, guess whose face I'm not gonna be licking, you know? Yeah, I'm talking about you, Miss Abby Dabby Doo. You cattle want some fresh grass? Hey, Kels, come on, Kels, let's go. Hey, Kels, come on, Kels, fresh grass, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go. Some folks have remarked that they've noticed that Audrey has become the boss cow ever since Kurt Cobain went away. And that's definitely true. She's like the most dominant. Ariel, the one who lets me pet her and is probably my favorite cow, she's actually the second most dominant, followed by Annabelle in the back there. Let's see, give you a better look at Annabelle. There, right over there. And then Anna Green Gables, who's way in the back. She's kind of at the bottom of the totem pole. Once the calves get weaned, which I'll do once I move everybody down to the barn, it's gonna be interesting to see how the hierarchy changes yet again. We'll say, would you look at this grass? This is frozen. They can still eat it for sure. They just need to eat more of it because it's less nutrient dense. I don't think it's gonna bother you guys though, huh? Hey, cows, come on, cows, fresh grass, come on, come on. Come and get it, let's go. All right, there we go. So I'll actually keep them in this paddock today before tomorrow moving them down to that next one. And so I'll give them extra space so they can just kind of clear out any remaining grass in this area. Given the way the weather's turning, I'm gonna guess they're gonna be out here for maybe one more week, maybe two tops before I have to move them into the barn. As you can tell by their shaggy coats, and I know I've talked about this before, but those shaggy coats are incredible for them and that actually helps keep them warm. And so in theory, I could actually leave them out in pasture for pretty much the entire winter, as long as they could like get out of like sleet and snowstorms. But even that, they'd pretty much be okay if they were outside with that. The bigger issue I have is they're gonna run out of grass pretty soon. I don't know, I probably have only about two more weeks of grazing left before I just run out of grass, at least in this lower pasture. And then the bigger issue is gonna be where are they gonna get all their water from? Because with temperatures where they are right now, our water is really starting to freeze up. Like this hose right now is pretty much frozen solid. And so even though I have a water line very close to where the cattle are right now, if I tried to run this water line, absolutely nothing would happen. Like you can see, so. This is where it actually connects to my main water line. It's basically a black tube that runs all the way back to my hydrant. But the water just will not flow this time of day. I gotta give it a couple hours, probably by like, I don't know, lunchtime or so, it'll be completely thawed out and I can easily run the water and it won't be an issue. That's why when I know there's gonna be a freeze up overnight, I'll usually fill up the trough during my evening chores. That way it's topped off and they'll have plenty of water for the day or at least until I can replace it. And so despite the fact that I have shaggy cows and the shaggy cows don't mind the cold weather, they do need water and so that will ultimately mean they go into the barn. Of course, long term, I will probably figure out a way to like dig some trenches and if I do that, I'll bury my water lines and maybe that'll work a little bit better. There's our Drake, Steve McQueen. Does everybody see him? Hey, Steve McQueen, what's going on, buddy? So I know everybody keeps asking me about when I'm gonna complete the hoop coop and make the video talking about how I built the hoop coop. And I promise you guys, it is absolutely coming. I have in fact completed the hoop coop. You can actually see just a couple of days ago, I put in this fence. It's not anything special, but it's enough to keep the geese from eating it. And it'll be enough to keep the birds from like trying to escape their bird yard. And so I'm very happy with how the fence turned out. But because it's been so warm, I haven't wanted to move the birds inside there. You know, once our farm hits like the winter lockdown mode, we are on winter lockdown mode until the spring. I don't want to have to like bring them in and take them out and bring them in. It's just, 
becomes a headache and a hassle. The farm becomes infinitely easier to manage when you have the birds like following one specific system. It's kind of the same thing with the cattle. I wouldn't want to bring the cattle in and then bring them back out. It's just a hassle. You know, I really see our farm as one that's built for winter. But when your farm's built for winter like that, you usually have two operating modes. You have your cold season and your warm season mode. And I'm keeping us in warm season mode for absolutely as long as I possibly can. And so that means I'm either waiting for a really, really hard freeze where, you know, it's staying in the 30s all day, or we're about to get walled by a big snowstorm. Once that happens, I mean, probably in the span of a couple hours, I can move all the birds in and move all the cattle in, and, and that's what I'll ultimately do. But until then, everybody's gonna stay outside. Would you look at this chicken right here? See her? She's actually going through her molt right now, so she's looking all ugly. She's actually supposed to live with those chickens out there, but instead of going out there, she keeps escaping. Like, I have caught her and brought her out there, no less than 20 times. And she just keeps on coming back. And so I don't know what to do with her. I'm just gonna let her do her thing for now, but eventually she's gonna have to join the other flock. Abby's hanging with her friend Pablo. I think Pablo is trying to train Abby. Like I seriously feel like that's what's going on here. Like he doesn't like her, but this is pretty much the same exact behavior I saw between him and Toby Dog before the two of them became best friends. Of course, who couldn't be best friends with this big, lovable lunk? And I guess to come back to where I started with in this video, you know, if I look at Toby's fur, right? It's like a sheep's wool almost. It's so thick and dense. He's got the inner coat, which keeps him really warm and insulated. And he's got this outer coat, which helps keep him dry and collects like the frost and all that sort of stuff. Like actually, if you feel like right here, it's frozen right now, but it's melting as I rub it. See how there's the moisture on my hands? And you know, much like our farm, our dogs are built for winter. That's why we have them as breeds that are here that live outdoors full time. Yes, they're gonna have a lovely indoor shelter that I'm gonna continue to be working on today, but that's not to protect them from the cold as much as it is to keep them out of the wind and the rain and make them feel more comfortable. I'm calling it right now, guys. After having my dogs live in multiple different houses, whether it was that one or that one, or that one. The conclusion I've come to is the Maremma's default mode is to be outside and they really will only go inside when they feel like the weather's too inhospitable. I mean, there's been many a morning where I come out here and it's negative 10 degrees and I see Toby Dog just kind of napping on the ground, seeming very comfortable. That really is because of his thick winter coat. Now, when it comes to Abby Dog, you know, she's a little bit different. So last year when she came here in the middle of winter, she still had her California coat and so it was lighter. But even now, even though it's thicker than it was, it's nowhere near compared to the thickness of Toby Dog's coat. And well, there's actually a really good reason for that. You see, the Maremma Sheepdog dog breed, which is the breed of dog that both Toby and Abby are, originally it was technically two different dog breeds. There was the Maramano and the Abruzzese. And yes, I probably murder the pronunciation of both of those. And the Maramano breed had a shorter, smoother coat, much like Abby's coat, while the Abruzzese breed was essentially a thicker, rougher coat, much like Toby's coat. And I mean, these dogs weren't like drastically, wildly unrelated. I mean, it was just two slightly different regions in Italy. You know, there really is a heritage of a lot of kind of big white livestock guardian dogs from Europe. Like whether you're thinking about the Akbash or the Great Pyrenees or the Maremma, they're all kind of closely related, just sort of separated by regional breeding practices and you know, over hundreds and maybe even thousands of years, they've sort of broken off a little bit, but you can see a lot of those similar characteristics. I mean, I literally get about a dozen comments a day from folks who wonder if Toby or Abby are Great Pyrenees. So yes, Abby is a smooth-coated Maremma and Toby is a rough-coated Maremma, but both are known as characteristics of the breed because when it comes down to it for ethical breeders of Maremmas, they really should be focusing on the behavior and how they perform as livestock guardian dogs versus focusing on specific coat traits. Not that you can't steer the coat trait one way or the other, it's just that it shouldn't necessarily be a primary breed characteristic, like their ability to work with livestock. And yes, as many people who saw our sleepover video commented the other week, Abby definitely seems to have stronger house dog instincts than I would like, which ultimately to why I made the decision not to breed her, it really came down to that. 